What do we know about kids when it comes to COVID-19? Should they wear masks or get vaccinated? The United States has been inoculating children between the ages of 5 and 11. It says the advantages outweigh the risks. Critics say there's not enough data to be sure. Most schools around the world have reopened, and the rate of infection among children is rising rapidly. Masks could protect pupils. Some people reject that, arguing that masks can inhibit a child's learning. Why is it so tricky to find the right solution for kids? Hi, I'm Ben Fazulan. Some German states have done away with mandatory masks at primary schools, but a lot of parents are worried about the health of their kids. We'll talk to a pediatrician after this report. This is Leopold. He's eight years old and in third grade at a Berlin school. He long ago got used to COVID tests twice a week. Mask rules are also just part of daily life at school. All students have to wear them in class. But now that's changing. Now we don't have to wear masks. But I do anyway. The chance of getting sick is so unbelievably high. This is Corinna Alexandra Rada, Leopold's mother. She's also a parent representative at the school. Though Leopold and his classmates are too young to be vaccinated, children this age rarely experience severe cases of COVID. Still, she's for the mask mandate. Doctors can't guarantee that my child won't get it, and parents aren't interested in how many kids come down with severe cases. They're interested in their own kids. Christoph Zoyl is the head of Leopold's school. Teaching a masked classroom still feels strange. It's harder to recognize faces and to understand what kids say. But many teachers are upset that the mask mandate is gone. There are some who are quite happy about it, and they've made no secret of that. But most teachers think it's more important to protect health. The question of seeing their students' faces is less important to them. This is pediatrician Jakob Maske. His practice sees plenty of patients now that cold season is in full swing. He doesn't get many COVID-19 cases, however. He says it's high time for children to go to school without masks. We can't just worry about viruses. We also have to think about children's rights. We can't let adults go to restaurants to have a good time, while the kids have to get tested two or three times a week and wear masks. It's an injustice. Young children aren't eligible to be vaccinated, while many adults who are eligible haven't gotten the shot, leading to a fourth wave of infections in Germany. Leopold finally gets his coronavirus test result, negative. That's a good thing in itself, but he too longs for an end to the pandemic. If I could wish for one thing, it would be that Corona is over. It's cute seeing those kids there using um, the, the exact same tests that I use every day, but also sad and tragic. Um, let's talk about some of those points with Jakob Aman. He deals with pediatric infectious diseases. Uh, what, what are the pros and cons of mask mandates for school kids, in your opinion? So I think um, there is a role for masks in in children. So you will reduce the case numbers a little bit. I don't think you should overestimate it because well, children probably wear the mask in school when they're at the desk. They will not wear it when they talk to their peers, when they're in recess, when they're in the breaks or in the school way. So um, I think they, their effectiveness is a little bit overestimated. But more importantly, there are side effects to masks, especially in younger kids. Younger kids need to see faces. It's important for the development. Um, and so I think we should really not mandate masks for preschools and elementary schools. In secondary schools, I think, yeah, you could do it if this is kind of the, if you're at the tipping point at your pandemic and um, you need to do everything that's possible to reduce case numbers, I, I think it's, it's one way. The problem, though, and that's to me is very important, 
it's ridiculous to mandate masks for kids while adults don't have to wear them. Adults can go to clubs, adults can go to sport events, to the restaurants without masks. But kids need to wear them in school makes no sense at all. Especially since we're focusing on the wrong population. Kids don't have a big problem with COVID. Severe cases are extremely rare. The individual risk is basically non-existent unless they have pre-existing conditions. Um, so why not focus on the population who actually ends up in the hospital who will benefit from those um, restrictions much, much more than the children? What are the uh, infection rates like among kids and what, what's the disease progression like and also their recovery from infection and, and natural immunity? Could you um, take us through those? Sure. So, um, I mean, the case numbers are high in this age group at the moment. Um, partly due to the fact that we test every child two to three times per week. So actually we do see every infection in this age group, which is different to the adults. Um, overall, um, we have about um, 15 to 20 percent of all kids in Germany have been infected with SARS-CoV-2 since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, severe cases are extremely rare, though. We have about um, Six to seven thousand have been hospital uh, with kids who have been hospitalized with um, SARS-CoV-2. Maybe 200 have had severe causes on the ICU. Um, in addition to this, we have this hyperinflammatory syndrome called PIMS. With uh, we have about 450 cases in Germany since the beginning of the pandemic. So all those numbers are extremely low and also comparably low to other viruses that we see. So maybe just a personal um, example. In my hospital currently. Uh, we are in the state with the highest case numbers in, in Germany. We have one child with a SARS-CoV-2 infection in the hospital, which is not really sick with this infection. Every other child okay. in the hospital, we have about 120 beds, are not SARS-CoV-2 infected. Wow. So what are your thoughts then on a vaccine for, for kids, especially those under the age of 12, um, when you say masks are so problematic when it comes to their learning? I mean, couldn't the, so, the vaccine um, mean we don't need a mask? So, one, I think we don't need a mask in small children, or we shouldn't do it because um, of the side effects for those children. Um, in terms of the vaccine, um, there are children who are at higher risk um, for severe disease. Those kids should get vaccinated as soon as the vaccine is approved, which hopefully will be in three to four weeks here in Germany or Europe. Um, all primarily healthy children will not benefit very much from the vaccine itself because their risk of any um, severe disease is um, minimal. So I don't mind vaccinating them, um, but I don't think we should focus on them. Uh, again, we have about 3.5 million people above the age of 60 who are not vaccinated yet. Those have a high risk for severe disease course. Um, why focus on those 5 million kids between 5 and 11 year old who will not end up in the hospital regardless if they get infected or not? And briefly, I just want to add, what about the teachers, the protection? Uh, we've been talking about the protection of kids. What, what about the teachers? Okay, actually, that's, that's a good point. Also with mask mandates, who are we protecting? We're protecting adults. Adults can protect themselves. Um, adults can get vaccinated. And so, and if you are vaccinated and if you get your booster in time, your risk of severe disease is very uh, much reduced. So I think, again, we should focus on the adults. We should not focus on the kids. Kids in Germany had a lot of restrictions uh, uh, within this pandemic until now without being the ones who actually suffer from the disease. And this is not fair. We should change course. We should focus on the adults and every teacher should get vaccinated. Yes, I'm with you, but then they are protected. You heard it from attending physician Jakob Aman. Thank you very much for being on the show today. A viewer question now for Derek Williams on the Delta variant and surfaces. Are you more likely to catch the Delta variant from surfaces? We've learned an enormous amount about this virus in the last 20 odd months or so. Um, way back at the beginning of the pandemic, I remember 
desperately trying to track down solid information to answer all kinds of questions about transmission. Um, back then, we still knew very little about how it worked. Uh, remember those days when, when stores were running out of bleach wipes and, and cleaning products? Everyone thought that surfaces were potentially major sources of infection because studies seem to show that the virus remained viable on materials like plastic um, for days. Well, now the evidence is pretty clear that while not impossible, um, surface transmission is a pretty rare event. Uh, the CDC says that the chances that you'll get COVID-19 in this manner are extremely low. But I can almost hear you say it. Hold on. The Delta variant is a lot more transmissible than earlier variants. We know that. So doesn't that mean that it would be more transmissible from surfaces too? Well, as far as experts can tell, the answer to that appears to be no. Uh, like its predecessors, Delta seems to be transmitted almost exclusively through respiratory droplets and aerosols that are inhaled pretty soon after being exhaled by someone who's infected. Um, the reason Delta is so much more contagious, the experts say, is because it seems to be able to sneak into cells better than other variants, and also because it replicates a lot faster and in much greater numbers than they do. So while it's a good idea to avoid crowded enclosed spaces where, where aerosols are most likely to collect, the evidence indicates there's really no reason to start stocking up again on disinfectant wipes.